because of his youth. Because of he, he's young, right? That's like me trying to teach Drifter what motorcycle riding's about, right? <laughs> it doesn't work. He's, he's got a lot of history, right? So the idea is that he's blessed with special knowledge from Paul, from God, but it's still difficult for him to teach these people, right? And so we know that at least two times Paul was cursed. <laughs> We know that Paul met Timothy more than 10 years before writing the letter, and that's because of what we read in Acts uh, during his second uh, missionary journey, which was from 49 to 52 AD. And 1 Timothy, as we've started already, gives us detailed instructions for church leadership and church organization. It talks about proper conduct during worship, qualifications for church leaders and church discipline. So last week, we jumped right into uh, conduct during worship. Can anybody tell me some of what Paul taught in those verses? Don't dress weird. Don't dress weird. It was something like that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, right. Right. That's, that's good. Female. That's good, though. Well, if I don't, the way I want to talk about is the female. Ah, the female. Why would it be, and, and let's use another adjective Take away from God. other than weird. Take away from God. Provocative. Provocative, right? What else? Distraction. Huh? Distraction. Distracting, right? He, he told him to dress in modest apparel, right? Why? Not to draw attraction. Not to draw attention to themselves, right? That was the idea. Because, I mean, I know no ladies ever do that. Right? Ever? They don't dress provocatively or, or sexy so that men notice them, right? Nobody I know. But, um... Yeah. But we, we, we understand why he says that. We went into detail about why he taught that. Um, what else did he teach that might have been offensive to other people? That women should be quiet or silent. Ooh. So no Ooh. They cannot teach. They're all done. Oh, wow. <laughs> they want to be swinging. And we talked about that, though. Does that mean, does that, mean that women are any lesser? No. no. What's the meaning of that? No gossiping. Gossiping, one. What else? They get deceived. They can get deceived, right? Because they're nurturing in spirit. Right? Ask your husband at home. Ask your husband at home. Is it because, is it because um, God thinks men are more important? No, no, that's the order of the, like, the church. It's ah, the order of the home, okay. of the family unit. Why is that? The male is superior. Christ, husband, wife, children. And we talked about that, right? right? God yeah, says when you get married, you, you claim that you become a unit. Cleave to your husband right. or wife, right? Cleave to your wife. Become a unit. So, so, I'm so glad. You, uh, everything else that we taught, I'm glad you guys got that. And then he said something really weird. No, use that word stuff. He said, <laughs> he said uh, the women will be saved from childbearing. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And and it said, assuming they continue in faith, love, holiness, and modesty. What did he mean by that? Does anybody so remember? As long as we keep our role of being a nurturer, ah. we shouldn't step up and try to take a role that was never intended for us. Right, because the term we learned that was for childbearing also meant other things, right? And it meant your role in the household, right? right? And so people twist this verse a lot, and we talked about what it meant. And by the end, we all kind of got a good understanding of what Paul was trying to say. There was one other thing that he talked about that we said was very offensive to other people, other than just women. You guys remember that one? Men had to go in and raise hands. That was one of the things he said. I'm glad you said that. Talked about what he should see when he comes into worship, right? But there was one more thing that separates us from every other faith. That we have the direct What's the verse? You're absolutely right. What's the verse? Five. Go ahead and read it. There is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. Do you guys realize how divisive that statement is? He said there is one way to heaven. That's it. Right. Yeah. That is what he's saying right there. There is one way to heaven. 
And out of everything else that's in this chapter, that is the most offensive thing that can be said. Even though there's other stuff. Right? Golden calves. Yeah, even that. Right? Because he's telling people you can't get to heaven other than through Jesus Christ. There is one God. There is one God Almighty. And you period. can't worship all the things. You just want right? to One mediator. What's a, uh, what's a, um, a mediator? So I tell them. Kind of in between. Yeah, the in between. Give me more. Can negotiate. Right. 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 So like, say I sit. Right? Yep. He's going to go up to God and he's going to say, hey, look, join my mm-hmm. sin. Yeah. You know what? I can't. Like my attorney. Like your attorney. <laughs> what did you say, Wizard? Negotiator. Negotiator. Right, sir? Referee. 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 So this is how I want you to see this. You and I are guilty. Mm-hmm. We're guilty. We cannot stand before the judge. In our sin. We can't even go before him or we die. Because we are sinful. So Christ goes and says, This is one of mine. I took the penalty, I took the punishment for what they did wrong, enter into the kingdom. And and the reason that that's so important is, I mean, we look at it as is as more earthly things. So let, let's talk about this. Let's say you're, you're you're guilty of murder, right? And you're going to the electric chair. And Christ steps in and says, I got it. I'm going to go to the electric chair for this person. There's one mediator. He's the only one that can go to God before him on behalf of us. So I just want you to see how powerful that verse is, okay? All right, so uh, let's keep going. <coughs> we jump into the original language, and just to remind you, uh, the passage, the Greek word sozo, was saved. You guys remember that? Yeah. If not, just not in small, makes me feel good. <laughs> and uh, and it, was, it, it was also meant to say uh, they're saved through childbearing, which was technogonias. I said it much better this time. Which was parenting or the performance of maternal duty. Uh, so let's jump. Let's jump into this. We finished last week by demonstrating how today's ideas about roles in the home or in in, in a family have stripped men of their natural roles as warriors and protectors, right? And have turned them into wimps. We talked about. They have also stripped many women of their womanhood and natural maternal instincts and tried to turn them into men, right? And we see that in our society, right? I don't think anybody in here would disagree with that. But then, that's how we ended. And chapter 3 goes into more instruction and changes the subject. And he goes into what church leadership should look like. Okay? So somebody read verse 1. This is a statement that can be trusted. If anyone sets his heart on being a bishop, he desires something excellent. Okay. So we're going to say instead of bishop, we're going to say church leader. Right? Um, So if anybody wants to be a church leader, that's a good thing. That's exactly what he's saying. It's a good thing. That's an honorable thing. Right? But then he starts going into the qualification. Because not everybody is cut out, right? I'm definitely not, just so you know. Um, Verse 2, somebody read verse 2. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach. A husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, Able to teach. I'm out of here. <laughs> so let's I'm teasing. So let's break that down. Somebody that's above reproach. Why is it important for a church leader to be above reproach? Because people people will slander you. What? They will try to discredit you. What? They will try to drag you down. Like why are you preaching to me whatever you don't live by? 
kept it. What? You know, guys are crazy. People are alive. Bars. What's that? You can't be out of the topless bars and running all over the place running them up. You can't do it. Gotta stop that. Right. I can't help myself. So listen. <laughs> He must be, the King James says, the husband of one wife. Okay? This says faithful to his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He must be faithful to his wife. Okay? Now, the reason they've changed the translation is because a lot of people believe that that meant divorced people can't be pastors. Okay? Now, let me tell you this. Moses gave laws of divorcement. Right? So how could they be divorced and not be qualified? So the intention is that he's faithful to his wife, number one, and that he doesn't have more than one wife. Yeah. Why would it be a problem if somebody has more than one wife? <laughs> I was waiting for you to laugh. Well, first of all, it's going to take up too much time. What? Distraction? You're absolutely right. Too much time. Can't teach if you got two wives. That means David, David his Solomon definitely had some distractions. You got to believe it. Yep. Right? Solomon had 700 wives. Oh! And that was supper, right? Well, he was a king. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We'll give him a pass. But, but I love what you said. He don't have time to do anything else, right? It's true. Right. Here you go. You ready? He must exercise self-control in what? Life. Life. Your temper when you're riding down the road. You did? Somebody tried to kill me tonight on the way here. Throwing rocks for your chariot. Because of the Indian. It must be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a cowboy. Love that. So, you must exercise self control, right? Because does it take away from your witness if you, you don't practice self control? Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Thank you, hypocrite. We're all hypocrites, brothers. Yeah. <laughs> But you're not going to ask. More of a hypocrite. More of a hypocrite. Your actions aren't um, what you're preaching. Okay, what else? You're it's a fine line. Because you're not believable. There it is. That's a real How point. How can you convincingly teach this stuff if you don't do any of it? Yep. Right? That's verse 5. For if a man cannot manage his own household. We're going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get there. He first, must. It's my first time here. That's okay. He <laughs> must exercise self control. <laughs> here's, here's another one. Live wisely. Yep. Anybody in here? Anybody? <laughs> right? Well, we're not leaders. <laughs> it's a good thing. Live wisely. That's important, right? That you make wise decisions. All right? That you don't make decisions. That are really harmful to other people, not only harmful for yourself, but other people, right? How about this one? Have a good reputation. Mm. Goes back to a lot of things, right? Finally, listen to this. He must enjoy having guests in his home. Be hospitable. You gotta be hospitable. Why? You gotta be Welcome more people. So Welcome. Love and okay. You're supposed to, you're supposed to lead yeah, people yeah, to the Lord. Lord. You have to be able to bring them and welcome them in, yeah. into the You gotta be a nice guy, right? Yeah. You gotta be welcoming. If you slam the door in their face, you're not gonna be a good church, mm -hmm. church leader, right? There's an awful lot of church leaders you can't get to. A whole lot of you can't get to. Right? But that's on purpose. Not that, but that's on purpose. You need to be hospitable. You need to be friendly to people. Welcome into your home. Or go to their home. It's not necessarily about your home. The idea is that you like people. You know, there, there are church leaders that don't like people. I don't get that. <laughs> Meet and greet. Meet, hey, good evening, good evening, good evening. You know, people want to feel that they're loved. People want to feel that they're special. You know? You know, think about it. how many people's houses did he go to when they sit down and eat? Right. I mean, everywhere they went, somebody brought them into their home and fed them. And that was the most um, 
What's the word I'm looking for? Intimate right. setting outside of marriage, right? I mean, you're sitting down, you're eating. And then finally, he must be able to teach. Why? <laughs> because you're supposed to teach. Yeah. Huh? You get the message across. I've seen a lot of these guys, okay? I've seen them where they have 90% of it, but they can't teach. Or they're great teachers, but they don't like people. <laughs> you know? And, and it's important that people that are in church leadership positions are like this. Now, here's what I've also seen is where God has equipped those people to become those people. Yeah. Okay? I've seen that too. You know? Where over time, all of a sudden, they're a fantastic church leader. When, when in the beginning, eh, you were kind of like, well, is he mama called or God called? Right? Mm -hmm. So, Paul says that they must be faithful to their wives. I can see why that would be important. Uh, have self-control. Live wisely. Which, listen, it speaks to what we taught last Saturday in church, if you remember. We shouldn't live foolishly or carelessly, right? You guys were here Saturday. You remember me teaching that. That was straight out of, um, uh, what did we read that out Guard, Guardrail. Guardrail, well, the series, yeah. But uh, Corinthians, right? So, uh, they must be hospitable, must like to teach. All right, so somebody read verse 3. He must not be a heavy drink. Why is that important? Yeah. To your witness? What else? Let's break them down. Heavy drinker? Mm. Yeah. Probably they're going to touch you. Well, no. it doesn't say that you can't drink something to drink that's not a heavy drinker. That is drunk. Well, mine says not a drunkard. Yeah, drunkard. Mine says not to drink excessively. Yeah. Mine says not given to wine. <laughs> so let me ask you guys a question. Not 22. Right. Let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask you guys a question. What does a person describe a person who's drunk? Who's obnoxious? Obnoxious? Fall down loud? What else? Violent. Violent. What else? Can't speak. Yeah. Can't speak. Hold the spoon. Definitely not. Their inhibitions are. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They can't. Can't speak of all that. God, and they can't speak. So. You don't want one of these people in government, right? Why would you want them in charge of a church? Right. right? How about violence? Why is that a problem? I'm not going to be the problem to get to get them Yeah, I told you to give money! <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> violence in church leadership don't mix, right? No. That's tough, man. He's really strong. Especially in a biker church. <laughs> right? Can you be gentle? And not be a winner. Yes. Yep. How? Yeah. Just by just your aura. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who was else? Who else was like that? Jesus. Was Jesus a winner? Nope. Yeah. Guys, Jesus was a carpenter. You guys seen Amish kids before? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, carpenter kids. Yeah. You know they're good. I see a skinny carpenter from out back in the end days so didn't have no zoom lumber. That's right. <laughs> what was that? Confidence in how he stood. Listen to this. The more you try to convince people you're tough, the less tough you are. You know? I tell people this. A lion recognizes another lion. You, you don't need to tell anybody you're a tough guy. Okay? And... The reality is the people that are like that usually aren't ready for the guys that are, right? So you can be gentle. You don't have to fight. You don't have to be violent. And still you don't have to be a whip. There's a big difference. Silent confidence goes a lot further than blustery boasting, right? And then finally, this one's important, not love money. Why is that a problem? Why would that be a problem? You can be bought and sold, absolutely. Right? Or, or look at freshly things or teach you things of God, not the world. You're about all about money. You know. Do we see that in other churches? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And when you look at you gotta, you got to measure what you see against the scripture. It's clear, right? Well, that's what Frank is the root of all evil. Yeah. Money is the love of money is the root of all evil. That's right. 
Right. And actually, I was about to read that. Chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with very many sorrows. Listen, I've seen family members tear each other apart over a thousand dollars. I can't I can't believe it. I, I'm just I can't believe it, yes, ma'am. Um, Judas loved money and you think? He tried to get back when he realized what he did. Yeah, yeah. He's jealous of his sacrifice. So, listen to this. We're going to go now. Now you can read verse 4, brother. 4? Yeah, 4 and 5. He must manage his own family well, having children who respect and obey him. For if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? Okay, so, let me tell you something that came up when I got my divorce. I came to our church leaders and I said, I don't know if I meet the qualifications of being a pastor right now. And we talked through the verses. Right? You guys remember? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who said it. <coughs> somebody said, well, your family left your household. And I thought about the umbrellas that we were talking about last week, right? Because the minute you go out from underneath, you're no longer there. So I literally wasn't sure. But when somebody said that, I thought about it, prayed about it, and I kept doing it. Because I believed at that point, you know, Sean even asked me about it. You know, and, I, and I'm glad you asked me. Because he hadn't been there for all the church services, and he's like, how can you keep going? Like, nothing's wrong. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm not. Trust me. Right? But it's good that people call you on that stuff. Because if I could have just gone on, there probably wasn't. Right? Um, for if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? When they were in my house, they did the right things. When they left, I can't control it. Yes, sir. That's the management part. It's not the yacht divorce and stuff. It's the management. It's like, okay, here's a pastor. He's got six kids. Or six, you know, some of them going to jail regularly. There's a bunch of them that are drug addicts. Everybody's going the wrong way. Why? Because he hasn't spent enough time at home. Right. If he didn't, if he didn't, wasn't doing that, he yeah. wasn't doing fulfilling the obligations. So how is he going to fulfill the church obligation? Like That's right. little money. Right. We'll give you a little money to work with, or give you the same. That's right. I, I agree. <laughs> Questions about that? <laughs> well, I mean, I just see it as the fact that, you know, kind of like what Jim was saying, because I've known a lot of preacher's kids, they're usually not the best of the best kids. What? Or college kids. They're rebellious. It's like the yeah. problem those kids need to choose. I don't know. We have a bunch of kids that were preacher's lunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, I've heard your kids know right from wrong. They say, yes, sir, no, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple of preachers signing in the chat. Yeah, see your tongue out of the hotel with somebody. Yeah. I don't know what he's So, let's move on. Somebody read verse 6. This is an interesting one. He must not be a new Christian, or he might become arrogant like the devil and be condemned. Why might a preacher... Why might a church leader become proud? They think they know everything. One? What else? Position of authority. Position of authority. People what else? People look up to them. People look up to them. So they what put else? them on a pedestal. Put them on a pedestal. Ask their advice. And you start worshiping the pastor and not the church. God. Uh, right? That's why a lot of the pastors have been brought down. That speaks to the <laughs> Old Testament Jews too, right? The rabbis and how they were put in positions of authority. You know, for a long time I asked that nobody called me pastor. Nobody listened to me. Yeah. Um, because when I think of pastor, I think of a, a guy that's much more squared away than I am. Right? But, you know, a lot of times... 
you hold your pastor in high esteem, right? And and that's the idea is a lot of times, and, and they should be humble, but a lot of times they're not. They think, well, I'm worthy of this. No, you're not. I, I, I got that point driven home to me one time because um, I had a chaplain on my team at work being a nurse, and um, the chaplain talked in a way and acted in a way that I felt was very unreverent. Mm -hmm. To me, I thought a chaplain, a priest, preacher, mm -hmm. whatever, a person of God, should be much more reverent and, you know, open to people and what have you. So I spoke to another chaplain mm -hmm. that I, it was an acting chaplain, but also a ordained priest, mm -hmm. minister, and said, I don't understand. I mean, I was tore up. I was yeah. very upset about it. And I was told, and it made sense, I don't know, I still don't know if it was actually right, so I just you know, read over and over and over. But I was told, here's the problem. We're all human and we put people, we think of people in a certain way. Mm -hmm. We think of like a, a preacher or a yep. pastor, we put them up on a pedestal. Yep. You know, when in reality, we're all the same, Common we ground. all get dressed the same, right. we all live the same, but, you know, see, I didn't see it that way. I see that yeah. even the chaplain with sick people yeah. acting in a different manner, in a different way, and not looking at me and mouthing off to me saying, when I ask them to do something, and I'm a, a you know, a nurse, superior, yeah. so yeah. to speak, could, I would need this done, I would like to do, no, I'm not doing it. You know, who, I said, oh, I came on blue. Yeah. I mean, but that's the reality of it. Well, you expect people to act a certain way. Yeah. People expect Chris and I to act a certain way because we're a nurse. They expect yeah. other people to act a certain way. You know, I've even said to, I'm guilty of it myself. I've said to auto mechanics, well, what kind of mechanic are you? Yeah. You know, I mean, but that's what happens, I guess. We but that happens in. with any position of leadership. And that's why he's talking about it, especially if they're new in this. If they're brand new and people are praising them all the time and telling them how great they are, all of a sudden they start believing. Maybe God put me in this position because I'm better. No, you're not. Well, how much are they going to teach? I tell people all the time, God put me in this position because I got a big mouth. It's true. <laughs> all right? That's, I'm, I'm convinced. Right? Um, not only that, though. You know, I become proud. The devil will cause him to fall. Why else might it be difficult for a new believer to be a church leader? Satan can attack them easier too. Satan can attack them easier, yes, than they believe. Too inexperienced, man. Too inexperienced. They haven't seen God work in their lives for a long period of time. I love the zeal of new believers, though. Yeah. Right? They have that fire. Like, I want to get everybody saved, right? But I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I've watched people reach these pinnacles, and you can't maintain that. And then they find out the world still sucks, <laughs> right? And it brings them way down. You know, you haven't seen God work through a lot of stuff yet. You're not going to be a good church leader if you don't have experience. If you can't teach people how God uses negative things to bring beauty, you know? I mean, just in a practical way. Yeah. You know, sometimes I've learned the answer is, I don't know. You know, a lot of times we think the pastor's going to have all the answers. I don't. It's a new people at all. I don't know. I don't know. and brought back answers, sometimes I don't have any better answers than you do. You know? Alright. Um, somebody read verse 7. 
he must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Do church leaders, you think, get tempted more than regular people? Of course. Why? That's right. Because they want them to do that. Big target. I am convinced to this day that uh, evil evil spirits went after my family. Convinced to this day. Absolutely. Because they were trying to get me out of this role. Almost succeeded. But that doesn't mean I want to diminish any of the things that, that other people go through by any means. But when you start doing something for God, especially in a church leadership position, you better watch out, man. Because they're coming after you. That is amazing. Especially when people start listening. Right? Because they're looking for any reason to trip you up. And and especially people that that um, are anti-church. You know, if they can find anything to hang you out of. And that's those are those are living for this world, right? They're working for the devil. They don't even know it. Alright. Um the next few verses specifically talk about the deacon. Okay? And let me ask you, before we go into it, does anybody know what the word deacon means? No? Huh? Close. Um, the word deacon comes from a Greek word, diakonos, which means helper. Okay. So I want you to I want you to listen just for a minute, and I'm going to explain some of the roles in the church. First, I'm going to talk about the Orthodox Church. Who knows what the term Orthodox means? Means. Traditional. traditional, that's exactly right. Okay, it honors a church that honors the traditional or original belief system. Okay, now that doesn't always mean it's real or it's true, but that's what orthodox means. Okay, so when you look at orthodox churches, they first began with priests. Everybody's familiar, not just Catholic, right, but all over the world. They began with priests, okay? They also began with under priests, elders. And then finally you've heard the term deacon, okay? To this day, they still have those in a lot of churches, all right, orthodox. Over time, these roles became bishops, okay, especially in the Catholic Church. Bishops were over priests. Bishops were over an area, priests were the, were the church, the specific church, and then deacons were still helpers to the priests. Now, over time, as we got further and further away from Orthodox Church, they used the term pastor. Who knows what the term pastor means? Overseer. A pastor is an overseer. Now, some of these words, when you think about it, are interchangeable. Okay? Because a priest is an overseer. If you're an, a, an ordained pastor, in, in Old Testament, Old Testament language, hey buddy, you're, you're a priest, right? Ooh, ooh, fine. So it's okay. <laughs> hey brother. But the idea is that we understand that all of these these terms are a hierarchy, okay? Not that one's more important than another, but they all have individual purposes. The reason we probably don't have deacons here is because we're not bad, frankly, okay? Um, because the idea behind a deacon is that when the pastor is visiting one member, a deacon can go to another one, or when you serve communion. And our church leadership serves in that capacity, too, right? So the idea is that you understand what this is talking about when we go into the next verses, okay? Somebody read verse 8. For physical training, 
has some value, but godliness has value for all things holding promise. For I, think you're, for I think you're in the wrong book, brother. Oh, Are yeah. you in 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy. I th- we're in 1 Timothy. That's where I am. 1 Timothy 3 8. 3 8. Chapter 3. Oh, chapter 3. Oh. 3 verse 8. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not um, double tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy, of filthy. Now, if, if you read the King James, it says filthy King lucre. lucre. Yeah, right. What does that mean? Money. Money yeah. It's the same thing. All right? That's In the same true. way, deacons must be well respected and have integrity. But double tongue means that you talk out both sides of your mouth. Yeah. Same thing. Right? You say one thing to this group, you say another thing to this group. Right? Or dishonest with money. But a dishonest, absolutely. They must be not given to much wine. They must not be heavy drinkers. Right? Oh, and, and finally, find dishonest with money. Right? Why is it important that, that pe- people aren't dishonest with money? Yeah. If they're a church? If they want to be a church leader, yeah. why is that a problem? Yeah, yeah, that's right. What? I don't get to keep the money? Y'all didn't tell me that. They must not use shameful ways. This one here was very simple. It says, not greedy for dishonest gain. Here's the reality. Regardless of if it's taking from the church, using the church to get money, it's all, they're enriching themselves because of the church. It's all dishonesty, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Somebody read verse 9. They must, be, they must be committed to the mystery of faith now revealed and must live with a clear conscience. I think the second part of that is pretty easy to understand. Live with a clear conscience, right? Let's put a pin in the mystery of the faith. Okay? I'm not going to explain that yet. I want to wait until we get to verse 16. Alright? Somebody read verse 10. First, the person must be evaluated. Then if he has a good reputation, he may become a deacon. So I don't know how I passed the test. Other than because I was free. (laughs) <laughs> well, obviously you didn't have agreed the money right? I'm just kidding I'm just teasing but before they're appointed before they're put in office because I've heard people, well, let's put them in office and see how they do no no well I'm sure they won't do that if they're in office no now, how many times have you heard people say that let's hire them and they'll figure it out no no Examine them beforehand. If you find any of this stuff out, they're not qualified. Right? All right, that's pretty easy to understand. Let's go to verse 11. Somebody read verse 11. In the same way, the wives must be respected and must not slander others. They must exercise self-control and be faithful in everything they do. Mm -hmm. Their wives must be respected. Why is that important? You think? Yeah. How so? <laughs> Absolutely. Goes back to the household, right? What was your I got another word here. Their wives, likewise, must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober minded, faithful in all things. Ooh. I think he's out of words for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, what does it mean to slander somebody? Gossip. Bad Gossip. Lie. Put them down. Talk back, right? By the way, this doesn't just apply to women. (laughs) All right? But it's talking specifically about how that would make the the church leader look bad because that's the closest person to the church leader. If they're doing that stuff, what's going through the church leader's work? They probably are good, right? They must exercise self-control. Right? And be faithful in everything they do. Everything. What about this? Yeah, that too. Right? Now, I've been to a lot of 
churches where they say, well, the pastor's wife should be able to sing. Don't see that in here. Mm -hmm. The pastor's wife should be able to play the piano. Don't see it in there. Really? Don't see it in there. Right? <laughs> hey, tell me you haven't heard of these churches. Yeah. yeah. The pastor's wife shouldn't wear shorts. It's not in there. It's not in there. <laughs> okay? Now, let me ask you this. Does she have to be hospitable? Yes. 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 Why? Because people are coming to her home. That's a good answer. I like that. If he's going to be hospitable, she better be. It's her house too, right? Can you imagine? Come on in. Get out. <laughs> I don't want you here. Right? I I'm going to say it again. I don't know how she hasn't killed him in this. Uh, she goes to sleep before me. <laughs> Too here. 
You're going to tell me, and, and, and really, I had to do some soul searching about this. What does it mean? Do you, does it really believe that because you've been married to more than one person, that you're disqualified from church service? I don't believe that's what it means. Yes, sir. All these uh, widows that, that died, justify anything. I want you to understand that. Because some people will say, well, I think it means this to justify their behavior. Look, divorce is sinful, it's wrong, and I hate it. But you know what? It is what it is. Sometimes you have to leave somebody. Especially when they're trying to kill you. Yeah. Sometimes somebody leaves you. And you have no control over that. You know? So do we honestly believe that God wants us to be disqualified from church leadership, because of that, I don't believe it. No. It's my opinion. It's just like he doesn't, even though it says Timothy for women in the Bible, in Romans 16, they talk about, I think her name is Kenobi, and how she should be upheld, and she's in high regard in the church, yep. and treat her well. So you can't tell me that in Timothy, you show them that women can't have a high regard in the church, and in Romans, you tell them that they can't. Now let me tell you what I believe about that. Okay? The we're talking about how church services are conducted. And a lot of the women, somebody pointed this out to me before, a lot of women couldn't read. Right? And so it would create disruption in the service. Right? Look, if you go back to the scriptures, there were females that were much more important than males. Okay? In a lot of the scriptures. Ruth yeah. I mean, come on. Sarah, mm -hmm. go do your research. You know, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of women that did things for God. But the point of that specifically was about the older order of church service. And I believe in this case, it's talking specifically about practical matters. If you have more than one wife, you're going to be busy. Too busy. All right? <laughs> and, and, Especially if you had 700, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to judge anybody that believes something otherwise. It just doesn't make sense when a murderer can be a pastor and somebody that's divorced can't be. Yeah. Yes, sir. I think that divorce has got a lot to do with okay. Why is he divorced? Was he divorced because he was drunk and kept beating his wife and his kids and they found him I mean, you know, you, you've got, I think there's an awful lot of... Kept his household in order. Kidding. <laughs> kidding. Kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> just, you know, just, you know, because he was cheating, he was off his... I mean, you know, it's all that different things, you know. There's always a different thing. And then again, you're still forgetting. God's going to forgive you forever. I mean, come right. on, I'm, I'm, I'm <clears throat> You know, Frankie, you know, my mom, we were brought up Catholic. Yep. And my mom, my dad was divorced. She could not take communion. Yep. But he could. Yep. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the same thing I was about the same way in Catholic. My mom yeah. could because she was been divorced and she married my dad. Yeah. And so wait, she wait, couldn't wait, take communion until something. my dad died, then she could go and get the sacrament. Yeah. They could mm -hmm. take it if they were divorced? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The one that knowingly married a divorced person can. Isn't that great? Wow. Well, my mom couldn't take it. She was divorced. And she couldn't take it. She married my dad. My dad, you know, wives of God all died. He yeah. died before, but they died. But she had been divorced and she couldn't yeah. you know, take communion until my dad died. Which was left her open. Separates them. And it's it's crazy, folks. And that's where, uh, this is where I believe men were trying to set up um, belief systems within the church. Uh, to make themselves more holy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my opinion. Because yeah. what we do in churches is we recreate the law. Okay? Oh, oh, you shouldn't wear that in church? Well, why? It's just wrong, honey. No. If, 
if there's not a reason, then it's not wrong, right? Oh, you shouldn't wear flip flops. Why? <laughs> right? I mean, seriously, shouldn't wear a hat. Why? I think God prefers you in church. Yeah, you Amen. Right? It's, but but we, we believe that if we do specific things, it makes us feel worthy, right? And then, again, these are my theories based on my own theology. Okay. I still haven't found out where, but I'm you know, going back to the Catholic story. Growing up, like men couldn't wear a hat in church, but and women had to wear a, 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 a covering. covering. That's Old Testament. Yeah, that's, that's Old, Old Testament. Testament. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, women, her hair is supposed to be covering her hair, yeah. and it's her her beauty. And a man yeah, should yeah. cover his head because it dishonors. But then you got Jewish people that cover their head with their men. Give me a break. Right. Got the big old hats, right? Yeah. So I think it's much garbage. It's garbage. Religiosity. Religiosity. But you have to remember when the translations were done and what they were trying to teach at the time, because that has a lot of impact on it. Okay. And that's why I love to read different translations because I learn different things. You know, except the. The message, it's not a translation, just so you guys know. It's not. It's one dude in his garage. It's beautifully written, but it's not a translation. Okay? Uh, and there are different translations of the Bible in different time periods. You know? And who's heard the term secondary inspiration? Anybody? So... We know that scriptures were God-breathed, right? Mm-hmm. The men that wrote the scriptures were under the inspiration of God. So there are people that claim, and they get mad at me when I bring this up. King James people believe that the people that translated the King James Bible were under secondary inspiration. Just like the original writers. And so therefore, that's the only word of God. If you know the history of England, <laughs> King Henry VIII, I can assure you that is not true. Okay? But the point is that when people have a belief about a certain version, they will do anything to justify it. I truly believe God is not going to allow anything to happen to his word, you know, as long as people are translating from the original text. Scholars that know what they're doing. So, anyway, my own opinion. Um, a deacon must be faithful to his wife, must manage his children and household well. Those who do well as deacons will be rewarded with respect from others and will have increased confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. Here's the point. You don't do it for the money. Rewarded with respect from others. And will have increased confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. You have stronger faith. That's it. That's what you get. Take that, Kyle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Verse 14. I'm writing these things to you, even though I hope to be with you soon, so that if I'm delayed, you will know, here we go, how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. He's specifically talking about what's supposed to happen inside the church. Okay? Now, remember when I asked you to put a pin in the verse? Yeah. All right, go back. Let's go back and read it. Okay. Um, somebody read verse 9. They must be committed to the mystery of the faith now revealed and must live with a clear conscience. Okay, now listen to this. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in human body and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. Is that a mystery? Yes. You better freaking believe it, right? Here's the idea. He suffered, died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day. That's a mystery, folks. And so the idea is, when you read in verse 9, they must be committed to this idea. Because you have people, even in churches today, who say, well, Jesus 
wasn't necessarily God. <laughs> Shut up, Willis. <laughs> right? Right. Jesus was not born of a virgin. <laughs> Shut your mouth, punk. Right? <laughs> the mystery of the faith is that, look, we don't understand it, but we know it's true. And I'm going to tell you something that I probably told some of you in here and, and others I haven't taught. Did I talk about the mystery of the blood in this Bible study before? And how I can prove to you that Jesus' blood was God's? You talked about it I can prove to you right now that Christ's blood was God's blood. You ready? Yep. Do you know that a woman giving birth who has AIDS can have a baby without AIDS? Yes. <coughs> How's that possible? I, I know the mechanics. <laughs> Y'all gotta see, she was over here doing this. <laughs> I got that. Yeah, how can how can a baby be born to a mother with AIDS or another blood disease and not contract the blood disease? Because they have their own blood. Because they have their own blood. Where does that blood come from? The father. Only the father. Only the blood of the child is the father's blood. And it does not mix until birth. That's how we can know for a fact. That's how science can prove that Christ was 100% God. Because if she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, her blood never mixed with the child. How crazy is that? If you don't believe me, go look it up. When I heard that, I couldn't wait to tell people. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Let's pray. Father God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, Lord, for your word, how it instructs us. Lord, how you've taught us this mystery. And Lord, even though we don't understand it, we praise you for it. We thank you for everyone here tonight. We praise you for your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Brady. Thank you, 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 Brady.